operation of 45 satellites, 300 antennas and radomes. He has indigenously developed C-band, KO-band and KA-band compact range feeds to meet various requirements of ISRO's satellite program. He has played a pivotal role in establishing satellite level EMC facility. He is also responsible for establishment of Asia's largest subsystem level magnetic measurement facility and world's first and largest compact range with 10 meter quiet zone. He has received IETE IRC Young Scientist Awards in the year 2012, ISRO Young Scientist Award in the year 2013, ASI ISRO Space Gold Medal in the year 2014. GE Foundation Award for Academic Excellence in Leadership 2002-2004, IEEE MG Achievement Award and Sixth Best Paper Awards. He had also uh, developed, and developed a payload to study the RF blackout phenomena during re-entry of space vehicle. He has successfully developed indigenous bus bars for high power satellites and used in multiple spacecrafts. He has published more than 50 technical papers in international conferences and IEEE transactions. He is a senior member of IEEE, fellow of IETE, IEI, and life member of ASA. He is a passionate volunteer and held several leadership positions at IEEE Bangalore section and India Council. Currently, he is serving as a vice chair IEEE India Council and chair IEEE APMTT Joint Bangalore Chapter. He is also serving on global committees of IEEE Industry Engagement, IEEE AESS, and IEEE APS. Presently, he is uh, heading satellite antenna characterization test design section. So with this, I welcome Puneet, sir. You can give your opening remarks. After that, we'll start with the speaker's introduction. Thank you. Thanks for a very, very generous introduction. That was not required. Actually, we should introduce the speakers uh, more. OK, anyway, thank you. So I can see now our Bangalore section chair, uh, Dr. Deepa Shunay has also joined. So welcome, madam. This event is uh, organized in association with uh, IEEE Bangalore section and uh, our I APMTT Bangalore chapter joint to Bangalore chapter has taken the initiative. And as all of us know, why we join any professional body? We join professional bodies for our professional growth. And first and foremost, anything comes, uh, anybody joins IEEE, actually, most of the time I have seen that they want to publish paper and uh, so that they can get recognized in their organization which is going to benefit in their professional growth. But how to this? People are really scared that the name, the moment name comes that, okay, you have to publish in any IEEE transaction or IEEE conference. They think that it is a Herculean task and it is not possible. So we wanted to change that myth. In fact, in Bangalore section, we have taken initiative in the form of uh, IEEE Connect, which uh, is a flagship conference of Bangalore section and organizes every year and uh, to provide opportunity for our members, especially from Karnataka and Bangalore. The students also, we have done several initiative like in the form of early bird discount, early and uh, early submission discount. So using those discounts, one can really publish paper in less than 2000 rupees, which is less than $30 in US terms. and. Uh, to maybe knowing that it is practically impossible in any other conference to publish IEEE paper in less than $30. But even though we have done this, what we have seen that uh, the number of submissions, what is happening from our Bangalore is not very encouraging. Towards this, we thought that, okay, let us have one IEEE authorship workshop also, which uh, some three or four I organized when I was Bangalore section chair. And this year again, we have initiated uh, last year, we could do only one. And this year again, we have taken initiative that we will organize at least two or three authorship workshop to tell members that how you can write a paper and it can be a published author. Why this paper publication is required? First and foremost, I already told that for your professional board. But in addition to that, whatever technical contribution you have done, that also will be archived for hundreds of years in IEEE Explore Digital Library. And generations will read your contributions, even though you are there or not there, through those contributions. So I think it is really worth whatever work one uh, we have done, either single-handedly or in a team. And if you feel that, yes, it is worth 
it is improving if it is a delta improvement also it should be known to the larger masses because sometimes what happens we have seen that uh, we will be re-engineering the same thing so we should not reinvent the wheel whatever knowledge whatever expertise we have gained if we will publish through IEEE that will be archived in your digital explorer and a larger population especially I am talking about India as well as Karnataka they will be benefited with your contribution so don't think that uh, this publication is only for you this publication is definitely for you but along with you it is for several other people also then most of the time we feel that okay my work is not very great it may not be acceptable so our speakers one that's why we have very chosen cautiously one from the industry and one from the academia both of them they will tell you that how even industry work can be published and anyway uh, isc professor devdeep sarkar he will be definitely telling how your uh, btech mtech or academic research can be published and they all have, uh, they are all are very, very well known authors and experts in their own field. So I hope uh, this is definitely going to help you. So looking forward that at least those who have attended, uh, they will be publishing in this year. So we are having immediately IEEE Connect. Last date of submission is March 15th. And those who belongs to microwave antennas and propagation area, uh, two societies, IEEE Antenna and Propagation Society, as well as IEEE Microwave Theory and Technique Society, they have come together to merge their flagship conferences, IMARC, as well as INCAP in India, which were happening separately in a one mega conference, namely IEEE MAPCON, IEEE Microwaves, Antennas and Propagation Conference. The of that conference is going to happen in Bangalore from December 12th to 16th. So you are having this dual opportunity of public publishing your things. So it is all the more important that in the beginning of year itself, uh, we are telling you how to publish paper. Then you can start working on that. If you complete your work, you publish in Connect. If you are still not able to uh, complete your work, there is another chance of publication in MapCon. This will be your beginning. And once you submit your paper in the conference, then based on that feedback and confidence, you can go to the transaction publication also. Most of the time people don't know who work should be published in conference, which work should be published in transaction. So in conference, your simulation results and your uh, not fully matured work can be published where even uh, uh, under progress work also can be given and they will be accepted in the conference so that you can get the feedback from the reviewers. You can uh, realign your thought process, your research towards uh, uh, outcome, which is really international in nature. So that is the advantage of conference. Whereas in transactions, your entire work, your, your work should be complete. It should have a definite meaningful contribution even though it is a delta contribution, but yes, it should be something unique, which no one, no one has done before. And uh, you can be, even if you can in, increase the gain of the antenna by 0.5 or 1 dB, you can re improve the cross pole by 5 dB, so reduction of side low by 3 dB. If that kind of scenario is also there, if properly you can mention that these are the achievements over other authors, and no one has achieved before you, definitely your work is going to be published. It is how you present your work. So with this, I will stop. I think the allotted time is five minutes and I have completed my five minutes. And before handing over uh, to Mahesh, I would like to invite Professor Deepa Shinoy uh, for her opening remarks from um, representing Bangalore section. Madam, over to you. Yeah, thank you. I was about to ask uh, to give me one minute. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, yes, madam. Of course. Yes. So, um, according to me, uh, writing a paper is as important as doing research. So, when you do research and if you don't know how to write a paper, then it is difficult to publish. And the entire research community uh, should come to know our work so that they can continue from that point. So, writing a research paper is an art, and uh, I'm very sure that to 
very eminent speakers will highlight all those points. So regarding Connect 2022, already the submissions are open. So uh, day before yesterday, we started uh, the acceptance of papers. And this year, uh, for students, all types of students, and we have reduced the uh, registration from 3,500 last year to 2,500, 1,000 rupees straight we have reduced to encourage them to submit and if they submit within February uh, 15, 20th, they will get 40% discount. All, all the category will get 40% discount and early bird registration till June 15th uh, after the acceptance of paper they will get up to 30% discount. And this year, uh, I'm happy to inform you all that we have 25 tracks, 22 tracks last year. We have increased the number of tracks so that we can attract more people and uh, encourage uh, people to uh, submit their researchers, to submit their papers. And uh, you know that it is the eighth edition of Connect and become very popular amongst uh, research community. I encourage all the researchers to submit their original uh, work and uh, make this conference a huge success. And uh, thank you, uh, Puneet and uh, speakers, uh, for doing this workshop jointly along with the IEEE Bangalore section because this was required for us before Connect. We wanted to co conduct one uh, paper writing uh, workshop and also we are conducting one paper uh, conference organizing workshop. Both these are very important uh, for people who want to organize a conference and want to write papers. So Bangalore section is doing this uh, every year and I'm very happy to have this event today. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good workshop. Thank you. Yes, Mahesh, over to you. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the, uh, the power went off. Sorry for that. Uh, so thank you for uh, opening remarks, Puneet, sir. And uh, uh, also thanks to Dr. Deepa Shanai, madam. Thank you very much. So now let me uh, introduce the speakers, uh, Dr. Ashutosh Kedar. Ashutosh Kedar, sir, can you switch on your video? Yeah, thank you, sir. So let me introduce uh, Dr. Ashutosh Kedar, sir. He is a senior member of IEEE. Uh, received his PhD in Electronics Science, M.Tech and Microwaves Electronics, M.Sc. in Physics and B.Sc. in Physics degrees in 2003, uh, 1998, 1995 and 1993 respectively from University of Delhi, India. He has fulfilled his uh, duties as a lecturer here for three years and uh, research associate CSIR for six months at University of Delhi. He joined as a scientist in Electronics and Radar Development Establishment, DRDO, Bangalore 2003. Presently, he is a leading research and development activities for active phase array antennas for various radar applications at LRDE for different applications. He has contributed towards design and development of antenna antenna arrays and RF and microwave systems for various AESA radars. He has also contributed on electromagnetic modeling and analysis of normal and high temperature superconducting microwave as well components using method of movements technique during his PhD tenure. His interests include computational electromagnetics, evolutionary optimization techniques, and wide scanning active phase array antennas. He has served as a chairman technical sessions for IEEE ISM in 2014 and INCAP in 2019. He has authored more than 60 research papers in different peer-reviewed national international journals and conferences and had a patent to his credit. He received DRDO Technology Group Award in 2010 and 2018 for indigenous development of single and four walled active phased array radars. He has also received Best Paper Award at ICMARS 08 and ATMS 18. He serves as a reviewer for reputed journal conferences under IEEE, IET, PIERS, YLA, IETE, AEU, etc. He is listed in Asia's Who's and Who. He is a senior member of IEEE, IEEE APS, and a fellow of IET. With this, with this introduction, I hand it, hand it over to you, sir. You can start your uh, presentation. Thank you. Mahesh, uh, can you uh, give me a share permission? I can share my slide. Yeah. Yes, sir. You are the presenter. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Thank you, Mesh, for a nice presentation. And uh, already, Puneet has given a very nice background of why this workshop is important. So, without wasting much of the time, uh, I'll start with my presentation. So, my presentation is visible. I hope and I'm, I'm loud and clear. Yeah. Yes, sir. You are clear. Okay, sir. fine. Yes. Okay. So, good morning, all of you. Uh, I'll try to give you a little bit information how you should proceed with your publications and you should not get discouraged as Punita has told. You should try your best. And so let us come to three points what I'd like to discuss with you during my presentation. So I'll be talking about IEEE authorship and to start with the agenda of my talk will be, I'll be giving a brief introduction about IEEE, what is an IEEE overview, what is authorship, what are the different type of publications, what is a peer review process, how to write a paper, what is a body of a paper consisting of different parts, what are those parts, do's and don'ts followed by the conclusion. So first of all, IEEE is an international organization and these are the mission and the vision statement of IEEE. So IEEE's core purpose is to foster the technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity. And the vision is to, it will be essential to the global technical community and to the technical professionals everywhere and be universally recognized for the contributions of technology and of technical professionals in improving the global conditions. You can see that all, whatever research you're doing, it should lead to some kind of benefit of for humanity in some way or other way. That is the main purpose of IEEE. And that is what they look into the publication. So we have more than 45 societies. Few of them are listed here. And out of that, we are our internal propagation society is here from which I am member and all of us are members of the internal propagation society and still to these numbers more are getting added like now internet of things and, and some those kind of societies are also being formed so it is ever increasing depending on the new areas that are emerging now what is an authorship basically so authorship the first aim for authorship according to me is to share to share your knowledge to share your vision, to share your work with the world or your peers or with your colleagues. That is the most important need to author a paper. The next important thing is feedback. You are sitting alone and doing some work, but you don't know whether you're going in the right direction, whether you're moving, whatever work you're doing, whether it has some relevance or not. So you need to have a feedback, positive as well as a negative feedback, positive to give you a confidence, and negative to give you an ability to improve further, to come up with your minus points, to remove the uh, negative points of your research, or maybe you're doing something, you're thinking in some wrong direction, so the direction can be aligned towards the correct path. So that is the second important part of the authorship feedback. So, and the third one is upgradation, upgradation of your knowledge, upgradation of your work. So whatever knowledge you're having that gets upgraded when you get some feedbacks from your peers. So, that is the third important part of authorship. And the fourth one is prestige or recognition. That is very important for all the humans, all of us, that we need to get recognized. If we don't publish, how the community will know what work you're doing and how will they recognize you? So that is the fourth important point of the authorship that is prestige and recognition. Then comes assessment. If you're working in an organization or in a, bigger body like we are I'm working in a DRDO or somebody is, is working in his role. So we are working in a small group, but how our seniors who are not sitting in the same place where we are sitting, how will they access us? So they can assess us through either through interviews, obviously, which we regularly go through and other one is our publications. Because in interviews, they have very limited time, they will give you some five minutes, 10 minutes to present yourself. But when you publish, before coming to that stage, they can go through a publication, see, okay, what kind of work you are doing? What is the relevance of the work you are doing? So they can assess you. So assessment is a very important benefit of the authorship. Then obviously degree and program for the students who are undergoing the PhD programs or MS programs, the publication helps them to attain their degree and the score. Then the very important point, which is according to me is to spur an intellectual debate within yourself. You're doing a work, but unless you put it on a paper, you cannot judge yourself. You cannot understand whether you're 
doing correct or not. So you have to question yourself, okay, whether I'm doing right or not, wrong. So when you write, so start writing the work in the paper, then you come to know, okay, I missed this point. I have to cover this point as well. So all these things start uh, debating inside you. Then collaboration. When you publish your work, there are the other people around you in the society who are also working in the similar area. So they would, they would like to collaborate with you. So you will be having a team, ever-growing team, and you can do your work in much, much more effective manner. Okay? Then you can provide a platform for the community to build upon your ideas to further enhance your research. Your resources are limited. Your time is limited. You cannot do everything possible in this world. So what you can do is you can publish some ideas. You can put it in a, a, a social platform. And there the other people can take up your ideas to move further and to further enhance those ideas, further develop those ideas, further develop some technologies out of those ideas. That is what all of us are doing, right? So if our peers wouldn't have published, how would we have got the ideas to, okay, I need to work on this. So those ideas you get from the publication. So you can also contribute to that by providing ideas to the others to develop your ideas further to come up with some good technology. Then the last point is progression. You need to progress in your life, in your career. So that progression is only possible once you author some paper because that will provide you a chance to go further. So this is a brief about the authorship, the need of authorship, the basic requirements, why you need to author a paper. Now coming to the type of publications. Now I typically have different type of publication and the most of the time I encounter that my students and my colleagues are there confused like where to publish. Like Puneet has also briefly touched upon this point. So where you should publish? Now IEEE has different type of publication, like they have letters, they have conferences, they have transactions, they have review magazines, and they have communication. Now conferences, as already has been told, the conference is a very important forum where you can put your uncooked ideas, means half cooked or uncooked ideas. Okay, I'm started doing some work, so I have some idea, a small idea. Okay, I can put it in a conference paper, a short paper. So when I go to the conference, I will have all the experts of my field attending the conference. I will have a good positive discussion with them. Maybe negative also a little bit, doesn't matter. It's all goes into the positive direction only. So when you have those kind of discussions, you will you can build upon your uncooked idea or half-baked idea. You can build upon that. So you get some appreciation, you get some comments, you get some uh, uh, negative comments also, they all help you. So that is a thing which makes the conference participation very important. That is a forum where you need not worry, okay, I have not done your work, any work, whether I can publish it or not, whether it's worth publishing or no, don't worry. Just put it in a conference, you will understand whether this work can be taken to a journal level or you need to do some more effort to bring it up to the journal level. So that is the importance of a conference. Now we coming to the transaction. So transaction is a place where you give your complete concluded work, whether it's a theoretical idea, whether it's a hypothesis, whether it's some experiment, it should be complete. So you have you need to have a complete flow from the beginning to end. So till you you do the inception of an idea and till you implement that idea, that complete cycle should be presented in the transaction, then only the uh, paper will be accepted. It does not take half big idea in the transaction. It should be validated. It should be proven and it should have some novel value addition compared to its uh, prior literature, uh, which is similar to your work. So that is a transaction. Now coming to the communication. In communication, it's a short form of transaction where you, do, you give a very small information. Okay, somebody has done some work and you have added some value addition to that work. So that small value addition can be put in a communication. So you can give your idea or you give your experimental results in that communication. Or it can be a review of the previous work also. If you're going through someone's work and you find, okay, these things he has missed and these things could have been presented like that. or So that can also be communicated. So that also comes under communication. Then you come to the review and magazines. So review and magazines, it need not be a new work. It, it is a review, as I've told, or magazine, where a particular technology or particular stream of the idea you can build upon. And 
just present a nice paper like okay i i may put a magazine article on active phase of antennas evolution of active phase of antennas so somebody can talk about the semiconductor technology how the semiconductor technology is evolving so that those kind of review generic generic articles which provide some information to the readers that can be put in the review or magazine it could be some general article related to society also how the society nowadays behaving towards the technological marvels what are happening like now these people are talking about the internet of things internet of space is coming a new concept where they are planning to have a internet of space concept so those kind of things finds a place in magazines then come letters so letters is a very small combination usually one and a half pages not more than that then that you have like you have come up with a very small formula which is a very new idea which nobody has published so that small formula can be published in the form of letter or you come up with some result related to an antenna okay, i could get some very nice reduction in the side lobe level or i could enhance the gain by this small technique so that small technique can be just published in a letter so you need not describe the theory and all you have to just give that idea with a prior reference okay my idea is coming from this work and this is my idea that's all so that is a letter so letter has to be very crisp and it should deliver the information what you are intending to deliver to the readers so these are the different type of publications which i typically have and i am sure that all of you will find definitely your articles is one of these things depending on the level at which your research is currently being held okay so i should always say start with the conferences and then you can go to the communication then transition and preferably i i would also like to put that magazine is not for the beginners magazine is for the people who have reached some level of expertise in the technology so magazine is usually for those people so for the beginners they should start with the conferences then they can go for the letters or transaction okay so that is a it is not a universal rule but it is a generic rule uh, how to choose a particular mode of publication or medium of publication to put your work into so as i already told there are different type of publication i triple has greater than 190 type of publication 1500 plus of conferences which are being held so depending on your area and you can publish the work in either conference or in a journal letters or a magazine now what is a peer review that is a very important thing to understand like this caricature yourself if first one say oh the paper draft you submitted to me is completely unacceptable or oh, you will be you are wondering you are pondering why he is saying so i have done such a good such a marvelous work extremely good work why is saying it is completely unacceptable so that is the job of peer so peer will explain you oh this writing is terrible just look at the sentences here so if you are not able to frame your sentences properly how will you imply what you have, the work you have been uh, be carried down for so long so you need to put it in a proper language so language is very important that is the first thing what peer will be reviewing so i will be coming to the body of the paper there i will elaborate upon this topic further so the next one is he will say okay now that i actually read it not that bad but this stage he will reach if you are very lucky means he will say your writing is very bad i don't want to get into the paper there is a first level where he will reject your paper but some peers who are good they will go still go further into deep and then he say no no it is not that bad actually so but still he will not accept it because the writing is not proper so what he will say next time try to be good the first time is skim over your work means the first time when the peer sees your work they will see your introduction your abstract if your abstract introduction is interesting and they find okay there is something worth being reading then only they will go inside and go further to review your paper otherwise your paper will be rejected at the first level itself so writing is a very important part for the peer review to get through the peer review and the peer review is a portion where you get the perfect uh, idea okay how what is your work where are you lagging so how to overcome your negative point so that is the job of the peer review now the thing comes how to write a paper so everybody is wondering uh, how i need to transfer my thoughts from the head to the screen so you have so many ideas so much of work in your head but you can't type it or you can't write it that is a big problem so that is the thing which you need to solve so how to solve that thing how to write it first of all read the previous work done by the other experts in your field in the last few years so i will suggest 
you sit and see last five years papers i will not say more just five years paper you see what are the work been published which are relevant to your work which you want to publish just read those papers what have they done what have they have implied what are the things they missed out then you write down a summary of your work you put bullets of the salient so first side okay what is the novelty in my work what is the value addition i have done what is the conclusion like suppose i am putting a paper on an nt element so i'll say okay so many nt elements and come in the past so many nt elements have been published what new i have done okay also no no i have come with a very compact form factor i have increased my bandwidth i have increased my game so those are my novelties and the value addition then conclusion is okay the last my uh, peers prior papers they missed out how to enhance the bandwidth part in with a very compact form factor okay so that is a validation and that is where i conclude my work so these are all the things how you decide and you have to jot down these points on a paper in the bullet form and after that only start writing then you question yourself is something overlooked or left means i have done some work they were in my mind but when i'm putting down in a paper i missed few points so when you have put those bullets and you can make out okay yaar i missed this point i have to catch that point also so you make a chain you check the connectivity of your chain whether any link is missing or not so that link of the chain needs to be formed okay then comprehension the best way of comprehension is get it read by some of your colleague or some other person because when you write a paper you always think i have written very good so give it for reading to anybody who may be not be in your field also and it's a big challenge if somebody is not in your field and he reads the paper he understands then your paper is surely 100% success so comprehension is very important whether what have you written is being comprehensible or not then self critic always criticize your work so see okay no no yaar it could have been better i could have done better so that little bit self critic is also being necessary then this is the important point which i would like to emphasize is use simple language first of all in a technical papers you need not use a very fantastic words like an english author will use or like our shashi tharoor sir will be using so don't go for a very simple language very simple language which even a student can understand if i'm writing a paper on antina even a class 12th or bsc student or btech student should also be able to understand the thing so simple language is very important so these are the few points which i would like to suggest how to write a paper okay now we let's come to the what are the different sections of a paper okay so different sections of a paper first one which is the most important part is the title what is the title of a paper because the title of the paper it gives a idea okay what i am going to read in this paper okay then obviously your name and affiliation then comes the abstract part now abstract part is the trailer of your paper like a movie you see the trailer and then you decide whether i should see this watch this movie or not the same way when a peer or a reviewer reads your abstract he decide whether i need to go further in this paper or not then comes the introduction in introduction you give the summary okay like a movie you give the casting okay these are the heroes and that is a pre prelog of that book like in a novel there is a prelog so it's a prelog where you introduction you say okay these are the things which i'm going which have been done in the past and these things were missed so i am going to cover this part in my research and what is the paper consisting of what i have done so all this summary kind of thing and comparison with the prior work why you are motivated to take on this present work comes into the introduction part so introduction is the next important part so most of the paper i would say more than 70% of the papers get rejected at the introduction level itself the reviewers don't go further and if your abstract is not good it does not go to even reviewers the editor in chief itself himself or herself rejects that so these are the first two levels of rejection abstract and introduction so these first four parts are very important for you and name and affiliation some people uh, journals are going for the blind review so their name and affiliation doesn't matter but in ieee it's not a blind review so name and affiliation also goes so person knows from where this work has come so it may also have some effect one person or two person i don't know now comes the main body 
the main body consists of the methodology equation results figures tables algorithms flow charts etc i'll be covering these points in detail later then comes the conclusion see okay where you conclude your work okay this all i have presented in this paper and this is my conclusion and in conclusion you can also tell a little bit about what is your plan ahead then comes the references what are the previous references you have considered which gives an idea that yeah you you have done a thorough study of this problem that is not a repeated problem and then acknowledgement and dedications if any are there uh, in case uh, you want you have taken some financial grant from someone or your boss has helped you in some way so you can acknowledge them then some supporting or supplementary materials like if you have some extra results from software code which you want to share with the reader so that can be given as a supporting uh, document so now let's elaborate upon this idea uh, okay so first one is what is the title title of the paper so what does title implies so title implies first of all innovation what is the innovation in your paper then what is the application of your paper what is the methodology you have used and how it is relevant to the particular society now if you see this example the first one is like deterministic synthesis of the white scanning stars concentric ring antenna array so what what do you uh, understand from this title that the technique what you are presenting is deterministic and it it, it uh, relates to the sparse array and in sparse arrays it is talking about the concentric ring type of antenna array so this is what you get that just by reading the statistics you understand okay this paper is going to talk about some synthesis of a sparse concentric ring antenna array using a deterministic technique now this next title is drone based material transfer system in a robotic mobile fulfillment center so it clearly tells that is talking about a material transfer system which is using the drones for a robotic mobile fulfillment center so it's a very clear very crisp title similarly this next one okay so white scanning characteristic of sparse phase antennas using an analytical expression for directivity so you are this clearly tells that there there is an analytical expression which is being presented to compute the directivity for sparse phase antennas which are also white scanning in nature so this is the way you have to frame your title you should clearly tell uh glimpse of your work okay what i am going to read in this paper that should be implied by your title so next is the abstract part so it's like i already tell the abstract is the usp of your paper unique selling proposition it is a shortened picture of the complete paper it includes novelty methodology results and application what is the application you are going to use so like if we talk about this drone based paper so if you see it's abstract it clearly is saying deploying unmanned aerial vehicles also known as drones for final mile delivery in logistic operation is inspired this research so from the first line itself you can make out what you are going to read in this paper then further he elaborates on what is going to present like like the last line is say two exact approaches are proposed a mixed integer programming and a constraint programming and tested for real time perspective so then in this complete one para abstract you can completely make out that what you are going to read in this paper and whether it is interesting or not whether it has been done earlier or it is something new so you can have some idea your reviewers the board of reviewers can have an idea whether we, they should go further with this paper or they should reject at this level itself okay similarly this other abstract it says the paper presents a generalized analytical expression for the directivity of the phase ray antenna it includes important design considerations like arbitrary element type geometry complex excitations mutual coupling etc etc so this is the need for the abstract so abstract you should be able to clearly make out what you are going to see in this paper further now comes to introduction part so introduction is what you go for an interview you introduce yourself So the interview board, by just seeing uh, having your first introduction line, they make out whether they should go further with you or they should not. Okay. So like you say, let the reader know what was unknown about your question before you started. But I did not know any of it. I meant where the gaps in the literature area. So you can see that your introduction in the first line itself, the interview board decides whether to take you for that task or not. Okay. So same 
famous for the paper. So in the introduction, you should introduce the problem. You should discuss the prior work. You should bridge the gap between the prior work and your work. That is a value addition for your work. Then you summarize your present work, what you're going to present and paper section something that in the paper, what are the different sections you're going to present. So that is that comprises of your introduction. So like in, if you see this example, so we start with the, okay, what is the consenting array, uh, ring array? What are these array basically? Then what was the previous work done? Like if you can see all these references of what I've uh, uh, described the previous work done in this field. Then what are the things they have missed out? So I've seen, uh, written here that, okay, they have missed out, the, they are only considering the Bessel function of the first kind only, which is not correct. We should go for the higher order Bessel function also. So this is the, we are bridging the gap. And then I say, okay, what I have present in this paper? And then finally, what are the different sections in this paper? Now comes the main body. So if you clear these hurdles of uh, title, abstract, introduction, then definitely reviewer will spend some time, good amount of time to go through a complete paper. Otherwise, most of the papers get rejected at this level only. This is more particular to transaction, communication, and magazine, what I'm talking now, not for the conferences. But conferences also, it's quite true. Now the main body, it consists of basically the theoretical formulation, your problem statement, what is your proposed methodology or hypothesis? Then what are your designs or solutions which consist of the good quality graphs, figures, tables, flowcharts. Why I mentioned good quality is that they should be comprehensible with proper fonts. They should be very crisp and clear. They should not be hazy. Okay, otherwise it leads to the rejection. Even I have also faced rejection in my initial days because of these things. Then comes the results and experiments which validate your upper parts like what is the design or methodology, it gets valid, validated. Now, the results and experiments could be through some measurements or it could be through some other software which is can be served as a benchmark. Then comes a discussion. You have to discuss your results. Okay, what you have understood, what you have observed, what you have concluded, and then comes the supplementary material. So this is your main body. So like in this, if you say uh, this paper, the main body consists of one figures, what is the theoretical formulation, what are the results, process and problem statement, the numerical case studies and benchmark. Now come to the conclusion part. So in the conclusion part, you basically summarize your outputs and your application and what is the future scope of improvement or suggestion. So if you see an example, so this, Paper analyzes the problem of synthesizing a wide scan, wide band or highly sparse concentric ring antenna array deterministically. And the Bessel function characteristics are utilized to derive a generalized expression of AF for CRA and in proposing the design guidelines for the synthesis. So you this is what you have concluded. Then you say a numerical test case study of 63 elements, so and so it demonstrates a low side of level, which is validating my guide design, what I have presented. So you say, okay, I validated my design, what I've presented here. Then you say, okay, what are the numerical case studies you have taken? So you have taken case studies of six in the five ring CRS. Okay, then future one. So this work uh, is strongly and uh, will aid in formulating optimization methodology using stochastic techniques for the realization of an optimal CRA design with minimal computational resources, especially for the phase of engineers with larger electrical aperture. So this is a one example of conclusion. And in this, you can also tell your future scope. Okay, this work uh, can be further extended to other geometries, other type of geometries. So that can be the future scope, which also you can suggest that, okay, I'm going to work on this and maybe in my future publication, I'm going to present that as well. So that can, that is a conclusion. Then come the references. So each journal has its got own type of format for the references. Anyway, this is for the IEEE, what I presented here. So the references, what do they bring out? They bring out the relevance of your work. How, how recently uh, a similar amount of work has been done. What is your connectivity uh, of your work, your present work with the prior literature. And I'll also suggest that don't put unnecessary references just to increase your citation count or number of references. That is not good. Like sometimes you have some early publication which you put as a reference, whether it is relevant or not, just to increase the citation, that is not correct. Okay, don't do that. 
and neither to increase the number of references just take other references and just increase the count to 50 100 that is also not good just put a very relevant list of references which is really describing your work connectivity of your, your work with the previously published work okay and the specific format as per the type of publication needs to be chosen and you you have to adapt that particular format to put in your references so people should think that this reference is very important and another why another thing why this reference is important is like if somebody is reading your references he will see he will think that okay these are the references from which i can get more information about the type of work presented in this paper now if we have not put relevant references and you put just so many references to increase the number of founds and that poor chap will be reading all those references wasting his time and becoming frustrated so have pity on the other people who are going to read your paper so put good amount of relevant references only which if he reads he can understand your work and appreciate your work more much more efficiently and the last part is acknowledgement this is not a compulsory part it is optional so if any sort of assistance support you have obtained from a person or a group or a solution you need to mention that you need to mention any kind of financial assistance if you have taken any kind of experimental assistance if you don't have the experimental setup uh you uh, you have uh, shared it from someone or you have loaned it from somebody you should acknowledge that and if your english is not good and somebody has helped you in writing or proofreading then you should acknowledge that person so these all kind of things comes under the acknowledgement now after completing the body of the paper few advises do's and don'ts first of all very very important never hurry to submit a paper don't hurry ke oh, okay now this deadline is approaching i have to somehow publish a paper i have to put a paper and don't do that so you read your paper you write it you go rinse your mouth give some break then again come back and again start the process i will suggest at least do this two to three times the read your paper again and again again and again so whether i miss something whether uh, whether some language is not good it is not comprehensible figures are not good so read them again and again see whether connectivity with the previous references is there or not i have referred the proper literature or not so all the things you repeat so don't hurry to submit a paper take your take a good amount of time before you submit a paper and this is another important thing which from my experience i would like to say always take rejections and comments positively sometimes you may get very bad comments but don't get depressed don't get frustrated take them positively see what are the things you missed out what are the those people suggesting to improve upon those things even everybody in our life we have faced all this kind of rejection and comments even in my papers also sometimes got very bad comments but i always take them positively that is the foremost advice which i would like to give you so that you can come up with a very very good publication so rejection always leads to a best work out of you third important advice what i would like to say is don't plagiarize so properly check your work for plagiarism it should not have any similarities because it will it may lead to a blacklisting of you also from that particular publication so don't go for that kind of embarrassment always do a proper plagiarism check there are many softwares like cross reference similarity check is there there is some turnitin is there there's so many plagiarism check software which you can use to see whether your work is having any kind of a similarity with the previous it could be unintentional also you may plagiarize without knowing it also because you are reading so many things or something gets stuck in your mind and when you start writing those things you put it on a paper so it is not like copying but it is a unknowing plagiarism so that also you should avoid and knowing plagiarism is very bad that you should never do so this is a very important part if you have any issue in writing take help from some language expert who can help you to put your words in that particular language that is better than plagiarizing the words from somebody else and my last advice before i conclude is don't limit your challenges challenge your limits so this is what i would like to suggest and conclude my presentation here so thank you so much and if you have any questions i'm open to the questions kindly 
be free to ask me or mahesh uh, how will take the question after the complete session or now itself yeah complete session will take sir after the complete session okay okay fine okay. then i'll stop my presentation yeah. yeah yeah thank you thank you very much thank uh, you dr so sudosh kedar sir yeah thank you very much and uh, uh, let let's welcome the second speaker of the session dr uh, devdeep sarkar sir can you switch on your video please uh, yes yes yeah, just give me a second yes. yeah yeah hope oh, i am visible yeah yes. yeah yeah you are visible sir you audible also yeah so yeah. let me introduce uh, second speaker dr devdeep sarkar He is an assistant professor in the Department of uh, Electrical Communication Engineering in the Institute of Science, Bangalore. He received his B in uh, ETCE from Jadavpur University in 2011, and MTech and PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, in 2013 and 2018, respectively. He has worked as a visiting researcher and postdoctoral fellow in Royal Military College, Canada, in May uh, August 2017 and uh, November 2018 to February 2020, respectively. Dr. Debdeep has authored, uh, co-authored 38 peer-reviewed journal papers so far. Uh, Dr. Debdeep serves as a reviewer uh, in several prestigious ITP transactions and letters. He is also currently serving as associate editor in ITP Access and IET Microwaves Antennas and Propagation. Dr. Debdeep is a recipient of the RC Young Scientist Award twice in the APRESC. 2019 and URSI uh, GSS in 2020, along with the best paper awards and grants from several conferences. He has also been selected for the prestigious position of Infosys Young Investigator by Infosys Foundation, Bangalore. Dr. Debdeep Sarkar received early career startup research grant from Science and Engineering Research Board (SCRB) (DST) Government of India for uh, two years project on uh, modulated space-time metasurfaces. Starting January 2022, Dr. Devdeep volunteers in ITPL APMTT Bangalore chapter as Execom member since 2021. He has also been vice chair in the ITPL YP Affinity Group Bangalore section in 2021, and would be assuming chair as a role uh, chair role uh, there in 2022. Since 2021, Dev, Dr. Devdeep is in I, ITPL Antennas and Propagation Society Global Young Professional Committee member. So, with this introduction, I will welcome Dr. Devdeep Sarkar. for this presentation on ITP authorship so please go ahead sir yes uh, thank you dr mahesh for this generous introduction and uh, can you uh, just allow me to share uh, my content i think it's still not activated yeah yeah one minute yeah yeah, yeah sure, sure. I'm, i'm sharing ah yes no Okay, so slides are visible. Slides are visible, right? Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, so uh, thank you once again, uh, Dr. Mahesh, and I would uh, like to thank uh, Punit Mishra ji uh, for uh, uh, chairing uh, this session and speaking uh, like uh, some important words at the beginning of the session. And would also like to thank uh, Dr. Ashutosh Kedar. I think most of the, I mean, the important points have already been uh, covered. So. i'll just give some of my perspective so that it can uh, complement i mean uh, dr kedar's talk and maybe like the audience and mostly the students and young professionals they can take away some of the uh, points like regarding how to publish a good paper in ieee journals mostly and at the same time i will discuss that how to uh, like uh, make a balance between the conference papers and uh, transform it to journal papers and many such aspects i'll try to cover uh, during this particular talk but um, uh, before i begin i mean just a little bit of brief about my uh, works and uh, volunteership activities at ieee it will not take too much of time so i am uh, working at isc bangalore in the ec department and uh, our lab is called this uh, laboratory for innovation and development in antennas radars and electromagnetics so in short we call it idea and we are our aim is to uh, resolve problems you know are uh, relevant for the next uh, generation information and communication technology healthcare uh, security and defense and uh, energy sector so we do a lot of research on component algorithm as well as uh, system level research and this infographic kind of summarizes the different areas that we uh, generally cover uh, during our uh, like research activities so starting from the antennas radars and 
a lot of aspects are uh, covered. I will not go into details over there. So I'll also acknowledge uh, like uh, my uh, funders and uh, one of them like you know, starting from my institute where they gave me the startup grant and also uh, Infosys for the Young Investigator Grant and uh, Science and Engineering Research Board that is a CRB DST for the startup research grant that is been transferred very recently. And we are having ongoing collaboration with several institutes, both on the national front as well as the global front and more information uh, will come. So if you are interested into our activities, you can just visit uh, this particular uh, website. It has been uh, revamped thanks to some of the volunteers and my friends uh, in Bangalore section. They have helped me. And uh, so now coming to the overview of the talk. So first thing is, uh, I think these parts are like many of the things are already uh, covered that IEEE publications and uh, peer review process. And a brief overview of these things and then I will also talk about uh, details about structuring an article for an IEEE publication and during this I will uh, like also discuss some of the personal experience like I'll try to take from the experiences that I had during my PhD and uh, postdoc and some experiences in uh, recently uh, so uh, from those examples I will highlight the different aspects like that are sometimes you know uh, like when you start you might not know but if you get some information from uh, some person who has already covered those steps and that that can help you in planning and also as uh, dr mahesh mentioned that i'm working as a volunteering as a reviewer and associate editor in uh, different journals and some of them are IEEE journals as well so i'll give some perspective like how to uh, write uh, the paper in such a way that catches the attention of the reviewer as well as the associate editor so that eventually your uh, publication is uh, like given uh, the maximum you know uh, like uh, importance or like the probability of it getting accepted increases so this will be the things that i will be uh, covering so about IEEE, i i have not uh, say in details but you can just see in the glimpse that it has more than 4 lakh members in 60 countries a significant fraction of that are student members and there are several uh, you know technical uh, societies 39 technical societies seven technical councils a huge number of chapters and different affinity groups and young professionals affinity group i am representing the young professional affinity group in bangalore section and there is women in engineering and uh, of course like IEEE also supports IEEE entrepreneurship and there are life members and now coming to the publication part so uh, one important thing is uh, you can uh, keep a look at the different resources i have tried to accumulate the resources and maybe the registered uh, participants will get the video link later on I, dr mahesh can comment on that so uh, these resources you can actually use for your own benefit you can access i mean there is uh, all the information is provided you just need to access the right resources so IEEE provides, uh, like you can see from here I have taken, that provides a wide range of uh, quality publications that make the exchange of uh, this technical knowledge and information possible among technology professionals. So this is the objective of IEEE publication. And it is the IEEE is the publisher of more than 30% of the world's current literature in electrical engineering, electronics, and computer science. And it uh, sponsors or co-sponsors over 1900 technical events across the globe and you already saw like the different type of publication types like starting from the journals like uh, papers communication comments transactions and letters and magazines in these different different fields starting from electrical engineering computing and biotechnology telecommunications and uh, power and energy and dozens of other technology so what is the main purpose of these uh, journals transactions or letters as i said it is to disclose and provide a permanent archival record i think this point was mentioned by unit mishraji in the beginning that a permanent archival record like even when you are not present in this world your work will stay and it uh, if it is a original technical work that advances the state of the art or provides novel insights then it is going to guide the engineers and scientists in the uh, coming year. So that is the main objective of an IEEE publication. And apart from like this journals, uh, IEEE also publishes more than uh, like uh, 1200 leading uh, conference proceedings. So which are also like sometimes what I 
understand from some of my friends in the industry is that conferences and conference proceedings are some uh, apart from patents they are a very significant uh, outlet in from an industry perspective so that it showcases your research to uh, like a uh, wide range of audience in a quick time and you can present and they can have some exchange of ideas so it is very important to publish in conferences as well and because it also helps the consequent networking so that is another ball game but if you are thinking of a journal well uh, like you have to plan in a certain different way so these points are i'll uh, just uh, tell like how to transfer my conference paper to a journal paper in the end of my talk now coming to some of the uh, publication policy i think this is also uh, one has to like uh, who is interested to publish in ieee they have to be aware of these policies right from the onset because uh, you know like they have ieee has adopted robust policies that maintains the high quality of publication so this is one of the reasons why ieee is the uh, leading or dominant uh, contributor in the high quality publication is that they are confident of the trustworthiness professionalism and integrity of the individuals that contribute to creating these uh, publications to support this goal the organization has uh, like moved towards adopting an approach of trust but verify regarding its editorial process and uh, especially during the peer review process and to deter the misconduct ieee as it always has will continue to treat violations of the publication process as uh, serious offenses so there are like uh, several revisions to the current policies so that is why i am trying to point out to this regarding the plagiarism detection and ad ad adjudication detection of inappropriate citations and detection of coercion by authors by uh, coercion of authors by editors or reviewers so these things are taken very seriously and i would suggest uh, that uh, one looks into this ieee publication services and products board uh, document like this ieee principles of ethical publishing so this one you can uh, like take a note and maybe have a look into like it is a large document and it will uh, like give you some important information now how to choose the right outlet for your work i think this has already been discussed but i'll just show you one resource which can uh, help you in uh, this that is again given by ieee so this is this uh, publication recommender uh, application so you can actually visit this uh, like particular uh, website and you can uh, like choose a search type like here you can enter the keywords and extract the keywords from your article and maybe you can also narrow down the date or find details about a specific periodicals or conference is also there but this one can help you like if you know if you have written down some particular manuscript on a specific uh, technical research direction but you not you are not very sure that which are the right outlets which are the right periodicals which are the right journals to publish your work then i think this is this could be one tool i mean apart from taking suggestion from your uh, colleagues and uh, maybe your research guide and uh, your other uh, i mean collaborators this is also one tool that uh, ieee can help you with so about ieee peer review process uh, this has also been covered but it is uh, vital to the quality of the published research but i'll just focus on some of the more uh, details on this like what is the what are the steps that happens when your paper you are sending to some journal uh, for publication so the journal editor invites at least two independent reviewers who are experts in your article's subject matter to evaluate the article and to provide the feedback so once you know that i mean you can treat it like a, a game i would like to say that you, you if you know how how to play it then you will uh, be able to uh, succeed in in a, in a certain way so then reviewers comment on a variety of points like once these independent reviewers are selected they comment on a variety of points such as whether the study is well designed or if the results are too preliminary like as i think the previous speakers also mentioned like when you are sending some paper to the ieee transactions or letters it cannot be half baked you can get away with that in the conferences and you might want some feedback also that's why you submit it to the conference but when you are sending a journal article you have to see that whether it is uh, like backed like whether your claims are backed by some kind of validation tools it could be through some simulation solvers and uh, sometimes I, i'll touch upon that in the later stage you have to see that two independent tools maybe you can 
think of to validate your work and the reviewers will actually uh, go through that like how your uh, whatever claims you are making whether they are relevant whether they are actually having some uh, value addition with respect to the uh, state of the art and many of in many cases like this is from my personal experiences as well that reviewers can help authors to hone the key points and identify and resolve errors and generate the new ideas as well like sometimes what happens is you send an uh, article to an IEEE journal and you get some uh, review that again uh, instills some new idea into your mind and that that is the evolutionary uh, nature of uh, the uh, like research work like uh, this is how why the peer review process is such an important and then the reviewers feedback informs the editor decision whether to accept or reject the article so there are like these two different uh, like uh, common uh, peer review types starting from the single blind and the double blind review in single blind the names of the reviewers are not shared with the author but the reviewers are aware of the author's identity and in double blind neither the author nor the reviewers are aware of each other's identity so each of it has its own pros and cons yeah, both models uh, the ultimate purpose is to uh, so that the reviewer can give an honest and impartial evaluation of the article so most IEEE publications uh, have, like they use the single blind uh, review format now what are the points as i mentioned that the reviewers uh, generally look into certain points in the article uh, to judge like whether it is worth publishing or not so uh, as i said like there are these ieee journals books and magazines and conferences and these are some of the resources in the ieee author center you can actually visit them and uh, look uh, for the different steps of this uh, peer review uh, process uh, like uh, what are the different points so i have just summarized like which uh, like in for the editors and reviewers look for what are the points first thing is uh, what is the scope uh, like is the article appropriate for this publication suppose you are writing a paper and you are sending it to like some journal on ieee uh, like uh, like let us say on microwave theory and techniques you are sending a, a journal article so the associate editor and the reviewers will first see that whether this article is appropriate for this particular journal or not whether it falls under the scope of that journal so one good practice is like before submitting just look into the points look into the scope of that journal and uh, try to align like uh, i mean if you uh, know what is the target area what is the target audience for your work you have to align your uh, submission to that then this is the very important point that comes up is what is the novelty is the original material distinct from a previous publication so in order to ascertain the novelty it is uh, very important that you do the proper literature survey i will also come to this point in the later stage but this is a very important step like if you do the proper literature survey and then do some kind of uh, introspection and try to see where your work uh, fits in the context of this previous state of the work and how your uh, research is actually non obvious and uh, it is uh, you know uh, having some kind of like a new direction to it which has not been reported in earlier papers so sometimes what happens is when we do some work and we are uh, because we have done it we think that oh it, it must be something new but you have to be self-critical you don't uh, like go by your own self-confidence or ego as uh, quote unquote i might say that i because i have done it it must be the great it is not like that you have to check all the works might not be all the ideas that you are uh, having from your mind might not be novel i mean you have to uh, do an impartial and honest uh, self judgment yourself to see that whether what you are proposing in this particular work is actually distinct from the previous publications and the distinction can sometimes be correlated with that non obviousness sometimes you can say that i have designed a particular thing and it might be very obvious i mean people might might have been doing it for uh, many years so that will not be that much uh, novel so this type of things uh, you have to uh, like uh, ascertain like before making any claims then uh, i can make some claim but whether it is well designed and executed that means that validity how to check the validity uh, so sometimes what we do is we uh, have that idea we first validate with it some uh, numerical 
uh, solutions. Some of the like it could, there could be some commercial solvers, numerical solvers, and we uh, try to simulate and see that oh this is happening and this concept is working. And uh, we try to uh, sometimes also create some guidelines so that it can be reproducible because uh, the validity uh, when the reviewers uh, will check. They can sometimes uh, see that whether okay the reproducibility aspect is there or it can be explained from some uh, physical principles, some uh, basic theory, it can be explained. So that is how you will check that whether the propo proposition that you are having, the claim that you are making, whether it is valid or not, and whether it is properly executed that uh, whatever studies that you did, you took account of all the different parameters and uh, important parameters, I mean, may not be all the parameters, but the main uh, contributing parameters, you have checked that, okay, you have properly seen the Im impact of the, these parameters on your uh, results. And uh, in many cases, you have to like verify that work from experimental studies, like uh, through the experiments, through the real life application. This is mostly relevant if you are working to build up certain circuit or certain uh, structure, maybe an antenna array or maybe a particular filter, maybe an amplifier and things like that. So, uh, you have to see that whether it is uh, valid, like the, sometimes we write the statement that the, through experimental measurements, we validate our results, we compared with simulation results and we have validated uh, our study. So, that validity is another thing. And closely related to that is the interpretation of the data. Are the data reported, analyzed and interpreted correctly? So that is what the reviewer will check and clarity like uh, sometimes what happens is uh, the person who, who is doing the research he knows what he is doing but he's not being able to express it so that is the challenge like as i think the uh, person also mentioned that uh, writing the paper writing the paper in the proper way it is a big uh, challenge like uh, and and it is as important as doing the study like sometimes many of the scientists and friends that I know, they are doing a lot of work, but the expression is not becoming clear. Like it is not concise or it is not logical. It is not having that particular flow from the inception to the execution and uh, validity step. So that clarity that will come when you practice, when you practice writing and get it checked multiple times, maybe from your supervisor or maybe yourself like looking from an impartial perspective you need to see that as some person who is going through your work whether at the first onset after reading your work you will be able to get the idea or not like you you should not look into the manuscript that you are writing from your own perspective you have to think from the reviewers or the editors perspective whether after going through that manuscript they are going to understand what you have done so this is the main challenge and if you succeed in this part then mostly your work will be like i mean uh, accepted for the publication so the whether the ideas are expressed clearly concisely and logically that you have to think and of course the compliance like are all the ethical and uh, journal requirements met so regarding the ethical requirement like some cases for the biomedical type of research you will see that you need a uh, lot of these ethical compliances to be met. So you need to look into the IEEE policies very carefully on these regards. Like this is just one example that I give, but uh, these are very important. And uh, whether the all the data that you are sharing, uh, like uh, in the that can be actually done in the public domain or not. So those things uh, you have to take care. So these are the points that during the peer review process, the editors and reviewers will look for scope, novelty, validity, data clarity compliance and finally the advancement so is it a significant contribution to the field like that is also uh, the point and it is you can say that it is somewhat overlapping with the novelty aspect so uh, well some study may be novel but it might not be that uh, like it, it might have, have some new theory but you are not uh, if the manuscript is not conveying why it is a significant uh, advancement to that particular field then again, the work will uh, become a bit weak in, in terms of the publication aspect. So from an author's point of view, I think this is very important to have a proper idea about all these points. And you can look into these resources from the author center for the journals, books, magazine, and conferences. Now, uh, well, I, I, as I mentioned, IEEE has 
39 technical societies and many groups and all. So I am not like uh, an expert in all, all those things. I have like mostly uh, so far, like uh, in my early career research, I have worked in for this one particular technical society, mostly the antennas and propagation society. So where uh, the field of interest, as you can see, is one end, like we design the antennas for the wireless communication system, uh, antenna analysis, design, development, measurement, and testing. And apart from that, how the radiation and propagation, they interact, the electromagnetic waves, how they interact with the discrete and continuous media. So the application wise, it is huge, like uh, starting from wireless, mobile, satellite and telecommunication, biomedical engineering, defense sector, the radars. So the application is uh, very wide. So this is I, I, why I'm mentioning all this, because I will now give some uh, case studies, some of the examples. Uh, and from there, I will uh, like give you some takeaway points, which I actually personally felt. And I think that if I share that might be helpful for many of the students who are working in this domain or who may not be working in this domain, but they can draw some parallels and some of that might be useful in preparing of their work. So APS, I mean, Antenna Propagation Society is 13th out of the 39 IEEE societies in terms of size, and there is a significant growth, close to 10K members, growth of approximately 3% per year is there, and uh, different chapters, uh, joint chapters, student branches are there, we expect more growth. So I am part of this IEEE APS Young Professional Committee, and which is uh, chaired by Dr. C.J. Reddy from Altair, and we have representation from the different industries at, at the same time, uh, like uh, the different uh, gender representations is also there. So, uh, I mean, I, I'd like uh, request you to also visit this uh, young professional website and there is a program. I have just, because uh, I, I am assuming that many of the young professionals and students are in this particular forum. So there is a young professional ambassadors program and where the objective is to uh, inspire, inform, and involve APS young professionals on a variety of topics. And uh, so you can see more details of it. Kamar is heading that particular uh, program initiative, and you can look into the young professional ambassador website. This year's there are uh, like a significant, I mean, almost uh, 12 young professional ambassadors have been uh, selected globally, and we have representation from India as well. And the different, like you can see that it is a truly international uh, representation now. This is the 2022 class of the Young Professional Ambassadors. So now uh, coming to the journals, like which I will talk about, APS Society, it has uh, three principal legacy journals. One is this IEEE transactions on antennas and propagation. And interestingly, it is ranked second or third in the downloads among all the IEEE journals from the 39 technical societies. IEEE antennas and wireless propagation letters and IEEE antennas and propagation magazine. So uh, you can see that there is the transactions, there is the letters, and there is the magazine. So a similar type of model is followed in many other technical societies as well. So you can, I think, other pro people belonging or doing research in other societies, they will also be able to relate to these parts. And recently, IEEE uh, has also started this inter disciplinary type of journal initiatives like for example these two journals like one on this multi-scale and multi-physics computational techniques this is jointly hosted by IEEE AP Society, Microfluor and Technic Society and Electromagnetic Compatibility Society MTGS and EMCS so this is one like uh, interdisciplinary type of journal at the same time there is another journal on uh, electromagnetics RF and microwaves in medicine and biology so this is co uh, sponsored by MTTS uh, APS is there and also this biology society and the sensors council. So there are some journals and one new open access journal is also there. I typically open journal of antennas and propagation, which is publishing highly selective papers. So personally, I have like uh, experience in publishing in all like these uh, three things, these principal legacy journals, like starting from the AWPL, which is the letters and the transaction and also magazine and I have also published in some of the other uh, venues as well, like IEEE access and different IEEE conferences. So I'll discuss some of the takeaway points that I faced while publishing in these three types of venues, which is common to many of the IEEE technical societies, as I have uh, mentioned. So, and I'll also take you through like uh, from the perspective of structuring the article and I'll give some ex examples from my own experience. So this is how. 
So this is taken from this, uh, how to create your IEEE journal article, create the text of your article. And uh, Dr. Kedar also mentioned uh, along these lines, like uh, these are the like main uh, uh, like aspects when you uh, see, when you form your article, starting from the titles, list of authors, then abstract, keywords and introduction, methodology, equations, results, discussion, conclusion, references, acknowledgement, and refining the use of English in your article. So this is, I mean, I, I cannot comment much on that, but this is because all the mostly the communication are in English over here. So this is one point that we have to uh, think about. So coming to the titles and authors, how to create the title, the title should be specific, concise and descriptive to help the, I'm sorry about that, to uh, help uh, the readers decide if uh, they should read the full article. So it should create, it should create that interest in the mind of the readers. And by readers, I mean, first of all, it should create the interest in the mind of the reviewers and the associate editor about your thing. So use keywords and short phrases to describe the article's content in as few words as possible. This is one uh, suggestion. And secondly, it is good to avoid the terms such as new or novel in the title because the reader already knows that your research is new and worthy of publication. So, uh, like uh, these are some tips on preparing the title of your article and uh, regarding the, of course, the author, uh, like making the author names, it is important to check that the rendering of your name in your article during the proof stage before the article publication. And there are certain ethical requirements as well, like in terms of being an IEEE journal author. So again, I will point this out, this particular resource out to the um, attendees, like you can go through this and see what these ethical requirements actually mean. Then uh, comes like after the title and uh, authors, there is this abstract part. So abstract should provide a brief summary of the research conducted, the conclusions that are reached and the potential implications of these conclusions. So strong abstract will generally consist of a single paragraph up to 250 words with the correct grammar and unambiguous terminology. The strong abstract should be self-contained, that is without the abbreviation, footnotes, references, or mathematical equation. But yeah, I mean, in many cases, we need to sometimes use some mathematical notations as well. It is not like it is a universal rule or uh, things like that, but uh, you, try, you should try to tend to avoid these things, these footnotes or references. This should not be in the abstract. As I said, it should be the brief summary of the research that you have conducted, the conclusions that you have reached, and the potential implications of this conclusion. So I'll cite some examples based on the my experience and highlight what is novel in the work. So good practices, I think this is uh, relevant for many of the others that you write the abstract last, like first to prepare the body of the manuscript, then when you uh, summarize the results, then you will understand, okay, these are the main contributions, these are the main conclusions. And from there, you should extract and uh, extract the points, main points, you should again summarize it and put that in the abstract. You don't like, uh, sometimes I have seen like some of my students as well, like they tend to start by writing the art, uh, title and the abstract. That is not how the paper writing should start. You should start writing first consolidate what are the main contributions, what are the main uh, contributor contributions in terms of the methodology or equations and results and discussion. This you should write in the beginning and keep the abstract and the conclusion, everything for the end. You might even write the conclusion first and then you should think. And I, I mean, generally, I tend to do in that way. And I found that in the IEEE resource also, uh, when I was going through that, they also mentioned uh, this particular aspect that write the abstract last and edit it multiple times before the article publication to ensure it uh, to ensure that it can actually accurately captures the entire article so this is one writing strategy and again as i mentioned that uh, it recommends that do not include the mathematical symbols in your article title or abstract because they may not display properly but sometimes we need to do that as i will show the, some of the examples very quickly and then, uh, well, uh, using the keywords, like keywords and the introduction part, this is uh, very important that uh, keywords will give, make your article more easily discoverable, reliably discoverable as well. And that leads to the broader readership of your article. And what is the benefit of broader readership? Definitely you will get 
better uh, citations. I mean, the probability of getting better citations actually increase. And this is another resource, this IEEE thesaurus that can help you find the standardized uh, keywords to fit to your article. So again, this is uh, in the IEEE.org publication services thesaurus access page. You can see that. And the introduction section, I think this has been already explained, that includes first you should start from a review of the uh, existing literature to position your research within the broader scientific field and show what is the novelty of your work. And it should describe the question that you are trying to answer with your research and why that question is important to the field. So the good practice is first start from some literature review and then you mention that this is the gap or lacuna existing in the literature and how your article or how your research is going to fill up some parts of that lacuna and that has to be highlighted very uh, significantly while preparing the introduction. So as I said, I mean, again, I'm repeating that part that good idea is to first see what are the results that you have at your disposal. First, summarize them and uh, from there you can and at the same time, you must know while you have done that research that which are the relevant articles or which are the relevant uh, state of the art research work that you have followed while doing all this experiment. Then you write down how, uh, like, uh, what is the literature review and how that gap actually fills in. Once that uh, body of the paper and the introduction is over, then you can plan beginning on this uh, conclusion and abstract. And after the abstract, you should generally prepare the title because I will say this later on as well that title you can say that it is actually abstract of an abstract and this is not my word I have actually learned this from one of my teachers who happens to be uh, I to believe fellow uh, in AP society from India so he uh, mentions this term very often that the title of your manuscript should be an even abstract version or even abridged version of the abstract of your article so this is how you should plan on writing your article. Once you plan it in this way, the pr probability of your work getting uh, rejected will be minimized. So these are some, again, personal experience. I'll not go into the research of these works, but some things that I will like to point out, mostly this will be helpful for people working in the AP MTT domain. So these are two like uh, examples of IEEE letters that I published one during my master's and one during my PhD. So these works, you can see that how uh, these two works, both of those works are actually some structure design type of research that we have done. So antenna design oriented work. In one work, we have developed a certain ultra wideband monopole antenna with band noise characteristics. And another work, we have developed a MIMO diversity antenna with enhanced band noise. So in both cases, you can see that structurally how we have started that we uh, like what is done in this letter we straight away come to the point like in this letter a novel low profile microstrip fit compact triple band notched ultra wide band antenna is proposed so that clarity should be there i mean in the first uh, sentence itself in this case also a four element wide band multiple input multiple output configuration consisting of inverted l monopole antenna is proposed then we start describing what is there in the work where are the notch bands uh, okay notch bands around these frequencies are obtained by certain steps. So then first after mentioning the main claim, you tend to describe like uh, what are the uh, results, what are the significant results and how they are achieved. Both the things should be done in a very compact manner. Design guidelines, these are uh, for implementing the notch bands at the desired frequency regime is provided. Here also like we mentioned that from uh, how like which mode uh, is utilized to make the wide band performance valid. So claim then how uh, that those claims are actually validated that is described and this match between the simulated and experimental results suggests that proposed antenna can be a good candidate for application. So the application will come next. So that is exactly the thing that I am trying to uh, highlight is you have to tell about the novelty. You have to mention about like, uh, uh, like novelty right at the beginning that will give you the important claim that you're making from your article and then you should describe that what are the methods that you have taken uh, and what are the results that actually validate that claim and what is the application oriented of the work. So satisfactory MIMO diversity performance. This was the main application. And at the same time, the index terms, this also has to be chosen carefully so that as I mentioned, the broad uh, range of audience, they can uh, 
like access your work. So this is uh, an example of two, uh, I mean, two examples of these letters where we are having some kind of specific antenna design, a hardware kind of thing is there. I have also worked on uh, like I, there are two more papers that I'm showing over here, which are not like exactly the antenna design oriented. They are mostly like one is uh, focusing on some kind of analytical technique. Another is focusing on some computational technique, like computational electromagnetics method. And in this case, like, uh, but you can see if you go through the uh, structure of the abstract of the abstract of the paper, uh, you will find out that uh, the main purpose is this. I mean, main uh, like template you can say in that manner. That is the same. First, we in this case, if you read, we propose an infinitesimal dipole model cross correlation Green's function algorithm that is suitable for for, for what efficient determination of special correlation matrix data for massive MIMO antennas with arbitrary element polarization and inter-element spacing. So in the first sentence itself, when the reviewer or the associate editor, they read your work, they should know what is your main uh, contribution there. And then I start mentioning that, okay, through the observations of this uh, dominant eigenspace, we can show that one can easily access the available degrees of freedom. And we provide the several examples. You talk about the examples over there, which lead to the crucial insight and uh, things like that. In this case also, I mean, this is the analytical work. And if you go for this computational work, where you use one technique known as FDTD, then also you follow the same process, like the how, like we propose an efficient FDTD computational paradigm to do what? To estimate the channel matrix of generic uh, massive MIMO systems. And working with the practical scenario, then we what we do the compute the dominant eigenspace full wave results are then compared and things like that we start describing. And finally, that this letter demonstrates the advantage of the synergy between rigorous EM analysis and stochastic communication theories and techniques with expected applications in emerging wireless technologies and beyond. So what I'm trying to say, I'm mostly focusing on the abstract here uh, instead of the full body. I mean, you can access the full body of several articles of your interest. But the thing is, the abstract should be very crisp. These are and also these two the examples that I've shown, they are for letters, like a triple letters. So letters, because they are short communication type of uh, things with smaller review time. So the reviewers will tend to like focus on it. Uh, okay, like, uh, like uh, I mean, the abstract should catch their attention and the contribution uh, to uh, should be like uh, very much, you know, uh, like visible from the abstract itself. So craft the abstract to highlight the novelty of the work and possible applications. And uh, I mean, the structure design oriented papers and algorithm oriented papers has to be approached in slightly different way. Like there are in, they will differ in terms of the uh, focus points, but the template I mean, uh, the way you uh, come about those novelty, they, that has some uh, similarity as well. So, as I said, uh, the thumb rule should be that paper title should be abstract of the abstract. And um, uh, like one important thing, like uh, don't miss out on relevant state of the art references while preparing the table of com comparison. Like in these later uh, articles, mostly the policy that IEEE reviewers and associate editors follow is they try to quickly look into the table of comparison and uh, try to see that how these aspects, like uh, whether from the design point of view, starting from the footprint, bandwidth, pattern, axial ratio, ECC, how these are better from the existing state of the art papers, or how the computational time, memory requirements, energy consumption, they're better than the other state of the art paper. So these things are there in the comparison table. And when you prepare the comparison table, you have to see that what are the uh, recent uh, literatures which have the results in these directions. And uh, if you miss out some of these references, there are chances that the article will get very quickly rejected. I mean, this is one experience that uh, some experience that we had with uh, while working, like some of our papers got rejected because we did not follow uh, all the state of the art uh, literature. So. Then, uh, I mean, of the structuring the article, I come to the methodology and equations, like it is a straightforward description of what you did in the research and how you did it. Okay, methodology should be reproducible by researchers. And in terms of the equations writing, you have to ensure that your mathematical equations and formulas, they display correctly in your published article. So 
in terms of like uh, the resources, you can see one uh, you, for the latex users and another for MS Word users from again from the author center. So this is very important because when you send the manuscript and if your equations are not written in the proper fashion, then uh, uh, these will be like, uh, I mean, uh, this again, I mean, reduces the chances of acceptance if the readability will reduce if you are not writing the equations in the proper fashion. And of course, the results sections, you have to include figures and tables to appropriate to illustrate your results that are obtained from your research. Now, sometimes we get confused that when to use the figures and when to use the tables. So figures, they are generally used uh, to show the data trends or other visual information and tables are best to use when the exact values are important. Suppose you are uh, comparing the error uh, between two computational algorithms, then it is better to use the tables. But if you are having a wide parametric uh, swing uh, and we are trying to monitor one specific experimental parameter over a wide range of uh, com control parameters, then the figures can show the data trends or other visual information. And there is this discussion and conclusion section. So in the discussion section, describe what your results mean and how they are important contribution to the research field. And conclusion section can highlight the potential or broader implications of the work. So this is again one more distinction that I would like to highlight. I mean, in, you can make one discussion section to summarize your results. And in the conclusion section, you can show that how the broader implications are, what are the, which are the areas that need further study. But again, be careful not to inflate your findings. Sometimes this is what early career researchers also encounter, that they tend to overestimate their contribution. There is no need to do that. Be crisp in that and not try to in inflate your uh, findings. So references, well, I mean, uh, this is, of course, I, like you have to give proper citation and attribution to the preceding body of work, and they should support and validate in hy hypothesis. So uh, this is, I mean, uh, like uh, where, like all the scientific and technical research builds upon the previous work. So again, inflating citations by adding unnecessary references is considered a breach of public uh, publishing ethics. So you should not include references which are not relevant just because you want to cite some papers or increase the number of references, don't do that. Try to make it relevant for uh, your research. Acknowledgement section is where you recognize and thank those who have helped to publish this article. You can thank your funder and someone who supported you during the project. I think these points are already covered by Dr. Kedar, so I'm not uh, going in details over here. So, uh, Finally, this I would like to highlight, like this refining the use of English in your article. So um, uh, sometimes what happens is many of us, we might not be very proficient in English right from the onset. So at that time, uh, it could be uh, like you can use this English language editing service before submitting an article and expert editing service can help you define the use of English in your article so that you can communicate your work more effectively. So. Uh, editing service, it is uh, paid by the author and it does not uh, guarantee the acceptance of an I I IEEE publication, but you can, of course, go through these websites like uh, aje.com, go IEEE and inago.com IEEE. So IEEE authors are eligible for discounts at the following language editing services. So this is one information that I wanted to share. Now, before I conclude, I'll quickly give you some, uh, I'll take more, maybe five minutes to give you some examples with the attribute transactions. So as uh, I think Dr. Kedar also mentioned, transactions have a full paper and also one communication aspect. So in the full transaction paper, uh, it's almost like more 10 to 12 pages and it is a detailed study. Unlike a letter, here you have to do a very detailed and comprehensive study. A letter can also be sometimes slightly half-baked or quick idea you can disseminate through the letters by some initial observations and results. But while preparing a transaction paper for any IEEE transaction, there has to be a significant volume of the work. Like this particular work, we developed one algorithm, we integrated it with one technique and then uh, verified uh, with several examples then uh, it ensures that, okay, this has been a comprehensive study on the topic. But once you publish, like this is one transaction that I published during my PhD, which was one of the uh, PhD chapters, uh, the complete work was published. And uh, while doing that particular work, I also had some extended 
work going like uh, this cross correlation means function which i developed i found out mathematically that you can extend it for some other propagation environments so that extended work instead of going into <coughs> uh, letters you can submit into ITP uh, communication so this is one strategy that you can take that if uh, there is a small extension of your work on the full transaction paper you can try to send it in some ITP transactions as well in the form of communication which is a short uh, publication so this is one thing and uh, another experience that i had was if you are having a fully mathematical or analytical work sometimes it happens that if you have that complete rounded thing if it's completely analytically verified it uh, assert and it is also relevant for the industry perspective then transactions actually have very uh, quick review and they sometimes you know try tend to accept the work uh, very uh, fast so uh, like um, in in this case uh, i had a good experience for this particular transaction paper but uh, when you are uh, working on some topic like these are two other time like previous works that i showed that are more relevant for the mimo and 5g and more relevant for the uh, i mean computational algorithms and uh, like uh, communication systems but some work that i went into like this is just from my personal experience is not for the general uh, researchers like this was mostly uh, for some fundamental research oriented things like some of the aspects on energy near the antenna which may have or which will have certainly from potential impact in the future when you have the near field uh, systems more predominant so this type of research where you tend to uh, challenge the status quo like uh, time domain uh, energy around the antennas this has uh, research from various contributors in the world and there are many sometimes controversial concepts as well so uh, there it takes a lot of time uh, to uh, you know publish uh, the work because the multiple reviewers will be there so if you are uh, like what i'm trying to say is if you are trying to uh, challenge whatever is the standard status quo and people may be from 30 40 years they are used to one concept and you are trying to challenge it then uh, of course their struggle will be more but uh, so what i'm trying to say the previous transaction papers i mean both are in the transaction but uh, the, the transaction papers which are more relevant for the industry and which are like the uh, like short term goals are clearly visible then the uh, review time also reduces but if uh, the work is slightly more theoretically involved and also challenging the status quo then it will take long review process and you have to be patient through the entire thing so peer review could be very time taking and proposing a completely new theory that can be very difficult to convince the reviewers and associate editors and uh, as i said as i mentioned earlier in all these works when you are thinking of submitting to the transactions you have to think how this is non obvious you should not report you should not claim something that is very obvious and uh, let us say you say that i increase the size of the antenna and the operating frequency gets reduced this is something very obvious and you should it, is, it will not be like uh, considered as a claim uh, that can be publishable in the transactions and while i showed many analytical papers it is not always necessary to have very complex mathematical equations to guarantee the acceptance of a paper like in many of the transaction papers uh, mainly i'm talking from the antenna propagation point of view like there are papers which do not contain any equation but they must have some insight and intuition to explain the findings that are obtained from the experiments and uh, uh, like uh, one final thing that i would like to mention on this that you have to improve the readability like this is one aspect i find many of the students and the young professionals they miss out the manuscript preparation should be very carefully made and small small things should be emphasized upon you should not ignore these points one thing is preparing the figures while you make the figures you try to make it as illustrative as possible and see that whether in the 100% view like sometimes reviewers tend to print the paper out and uh, they tend to like uh, see from there uh, like read it and review from there so the figures have to be uh, clear font size should be visible captions of the figures should be very uh, properly made and the typos and grammatical errors should be minimized as much as possible so this if the paper is readable then uh, you know it is uh, very much uh, like uh, chances are there that it will uh, get accepted uh, uh, more quickly 
and uh, these uh, these are some of the tab questionnaire i mean people will uh, submit the work you will see that these questions this is the supporting document this is not part of the main paper but what is the problem that is being addressed in the manuscript why it is important to the community so this is one question that if you why i am showing this because these are some things that you can think of when you are preparing the manuscript what is the novelty of your work over existing work we have repeated it multiple times and the references by yourself the references by other authors on that particular domain. So this is relevant for other IEEE uh, experiences as well. So finally, uh, some on the magazines. So magazines can have uh, non-technical articles. They can have the technical articles and technical articles can be uh, like purely review type of articles, something like this, which we published last year. It could be some uh, design oriented articles, which uh, we probably we, it's going to probably appear in 2022. All these things are from the IEEE AP magazine, but magazine again, it is a um, uh, time taking review uh, process generally because uh, and it, it, it did. But and one more thing, what that separates a magazine article from a letters or transaction article is the magazine will reach out to more general uh, readers. So. Uh, I think the work which have more intensive technical content, you can plan of them sending to transactions or letters, but which are more review oriented and which are more suited for the general audience that you can plan on sending to magazine. And here also you need to be patient. Okay. So the, finally, just one final point is some of these upcoming conferences are there. Unit Mr. Ji already mentioned about Connect and the uh, MapCon. And this is one question that occurs in the mind of many of the uh, authors that uh, like uh, if we publish the paper in the conference, how can we uh, can we extend it and publish in the journal or is it lost or uh, how, 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 how the planning should be done? So I will just uh, present like some of the views that are from this APS uh, website that uh, generally the editors and reviewers are instructed to consider conference and journal papers as totally separate venues, but a full length conference paper cannot be simply republished in I tab verbatim without this substantial differences. And uh, sometimes two different conference papers are combined into a journal paper. The resulting manuscript cannot be simply union of the original articles. It must have this point is repeatedly mentioned. Substantial difference from the original conference article should be there if you are planning to extend it into a journal. So what is this substantial difference? I truly mentions that substantial is at the discretion of the editors. Sometimes examples of substantial include, but are not limited to addition of new results may also imply more details on the theory implementation and measurements. So, uh, and, uh, but some catches like this text and figures can be exactly copied from the conference papers into the journal paper. This is not double publishing and at least uh, slightly different title should be used for a journal paper to typically describe a broader journal contribution, avoid the confusion in the archival record, and uh, must cite, like sometimes what is people tend to hide it, that is not the correct practice. You must cite the conference version while submitting the journal papers into two places in the manuscript central field while requesting the information in the journal paper itself. So the idea is that uh, many of the times the students will start by sending out the half baked or smaller ideas in the conference, get the opinion from the experts, and then uh, they can plan on, you know, uh, sending the journal uh, publication. So I typically supports this one. And, uh, but with these catches that I already mentioned, there should be substantial addition and you can include more experimental results, some new theory and things like that. So in the context of the upcoming connect, I mean, many of you can plan in this way that you can submit some initial part of your research in connect or maybe later on the MapCon and submit the extended versions in the uh, your respective uh, journals. Okay. And concluding remark, I'll just say these few things like important to read current research papers in open literature and also try to choose research problems which have potential impact on societal needs and industry application. And it is important to think big, like avoid, try to avoid very incremental research, at least in the beginning, you have to think like that. And crucial, like to have conversation with different subject experts. And I typically can provide you that uh, networking platform. And you need to, to this conversation, you can understand when to patent your work, when to publish and uh, things like that. 
and uh, whenever you are making a manuscript i think this is also a very much highlighted point that you have to do some kind of self criticism introspection read your own manuscript multiple times and improve it step by step don't get stuck like once you i have written it i will not change don't get stuck in that kind of uh, mentality and finally a rejection from one journal is not the end of the world i mean if your work gets rejected like i have shown you some of my own published papers that does not mean that whenever i send i have sent them to the journals immediately they got accepted many of the venues there were very bad rejections and a lot of comments came so this will come in your way i mean there is no point uh, getting uh, depressed about that just because your work has got rejected from one journal it should not hurt your uh, confidence or self esteem you should treat it like a sports i mean uh, sometimes you win sometimes you lose it, it's life so don't worry about too much about the what will happen if my paper gets rejected sometimes during the rejection you get very good comments uh, from the reviewers and that helps us to improve the work in a significant way so uh, you should take rejections and this criticism sometimes very negative criticisms also positively so this is a part so with that i thank you for your attention and i will be happy to take up uh, any questions in the uh, later on thank you yeah uh, thank you very much dr uh, devdeep sarkar sir for your detailed uh, presentation i would like to also thank uh, dr ashutosh kedar sir for his presentation again uh, sir uh, can you stop sharing the screen and uh, uh, we'll take yes, up the question uh, stop yeah yes yes thank you yeah so now i request all the participants to switch on their uh, cameras before we pass on to the uh, q and a session so we'll take one picture so that it will be useful for us uh, for reporting uh, so uh, please type in the questions in the chat box and it will be answered by both the speakers so before that we'll take a picture uh, kindly switch on the cameras i think i'm seeing only few we'll wait for uh, one minute so that uh, picture i clicked a few pictures uh, maybe i'll be keep clicking uh, so by the time i request uh, dr ashtosh sir and uh, uh, dr devdeep sir kar sir you can you uh, see the chat box sir so that uh, Hi, you yes, can answer yes. the yes dr kedar i think you can uh, start i think sort of uh, questions i am still not yeah i can see yes yeah so i think i have captured some pictures so now we can go to the question and answers so ashutosh sir i think there are few questions for you uh, sir i think you are muted sir not able to hear you yeah first one is how to collaborate with those who are working on similar ideas how to ensure that i am not merely or exactly copying the methodology that is already present i meant how to avoid plagiarism so how to collaborate and both of these points the only answer is read previously published works that is the most important part whatever subject you want to work upon it read the past references on that at least one year uh, last 5 years that will give you an idea what work has been presented in that who are the people who are working in those and with some of those people you can share your ideas preliminary ideas and request so if they are interested to collaborate you may co collaborate with them so the only answer for them is read the prior literature at least minimum 5 years so next question is please tell me how to download the ieee paper in journal sir i am a student member is there any benefits for the paper publication how to write transaction paper and how to avoid plagiarism 
So if you're a student member and to download the IEEE paper or a journal, you need to be the take the membership of that society also. Like if you want to download the paper from the transactions and maintenance propagation, so you have to take the TAP membership, AP membership. And these AP membership is ve are very cheap. Just uh, for students, I think it is around $2 or $3 only. Uh, uh, yeah. $1 yeah. So that yeah. is nearly 100 rupees or so. So if you're already a student member, please take the membership of that society also, and then you can download unlimited papers for that. That is the best part of IEEE. And already Professor Devdeep has given a lot of information how to write a transaction paper and to avoid plagiarism, as I already told you that there are a lot many softwares which can be used like copyright is there, Turnitin is there. And another thing is I will always request to people to read a lot, read a lot, that is the most important part. Whatever last five years you take all the papers relevant to your field and read them, read them thoroughly. That is the only way to avoid the plagiarism. And that is the only way to avoid you repeating the same work again. Like Professor Devdeep also told that some ideas you might be having, but they are very obvious. And maybe they are already published. So need not work on them again. You can move uh, further from those ideas. So that you can only get by reading it. And next is... As per the paper format, we can only put references which are being referred in our paper. Is this correct? As per paper format, we can only put references which are being referred in our paper. I didn't understand this question. Actually, references are those who which you have used to show the value addition in your work, to formulate your problem, and to sh show how you're bridging the gap in the technology from the previous work. So relevant to those, whatever papers you're referring, those come, uh, those papers found their place in your references. And the format is like how you have to put like whether author name should come first, whether the paper title should come first. So there's a, the each journal is having his own format that you have to download from the particular site only. And like for IEEE, IEEE website is quite informative and a lot of information is there. So you people can just go to there and already Professor Devdeep has shown you so many links and all. And I hope this presentation, what we are presenting, will be shared with you. So you can just go through those uh, links and download those things. Now, I think that these are for Dev Beep, sir. Oh, okay. thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So uh, I think, yeah, how do you uh, generally gather problem statements? Yeah, I think this is a very uh, good question. Uh, because as I mentioned, and I think Dr. Kedar also mentioned, like problem statements are to start with. I mean, this is very important. So again, the answer is again the same. Like uh, when you uh, look into the current papers, as Ashutoshji also mentioned, that uh, you go through the last five years papers. I mean, because they are like most current and you can look into them, you can jot them down. One good practice is sometimes to write short summaries of these papers. Like many of my friends and colleagues, senior colleagues, I've seen them do that, like make some small uh, like notes on what is the main contribution of uh, these uh, papers. So uh, if you do that, from there you will be able to see. You should you will be able to get, get an insight that okay, these people have solved these problems, but these are some of the areas that they might have uh, not worked with, and that is why it is very important to read the conclusion and future scope of those articles. So from there you can gather these ideas. Like what could be a good problem statement to start your research with. But again, the key is reading many papers. Like uh, this, you cannot avoid whatever stage of your research you are. If you, because nowadays we are having so many IEEE resources at our disposal. Like if you are a student member and if you take these small society memberships after some small payment, you can get uh, in your mobile device or in your laptop, you can quickly get the recently published papers. So. Uh, read them, read the open literature, and from there, read the conclusion and future scope part, and you will be able to gather the problem statement that can you, you can start with. So this is that part. And second question is, how is patentability of the idea reserved while submitting a paper? Okay, so yeah, this is, I mean, what happens is uh, what I heard from uh, many of my uh, senior colleagues and friends uh, is I am personally I'm working on uh, some of these things uh, now that uh, if you are patenting uh, something, maybe 
that is what I heard. I'm not yet still uh, sure about the full implication of that. But if you if you are patented RLD, you have got some provisional patent, maybe you can publish later on. But once it has come into the open literature, you may not be able to patent it. So there are certain things and patenting has a lot of legal uh, implications to it. So you should be very careful and talk to the patent office. And if your institute has some intellectual property right sale, then you need to talk to them and uh, plan on uh, like submitting the paper before and because once it gets published, you may not be able to patent that idea yourself. Like you transfer sometimes the copyright to the IEEE most of the time. So at that point, it is no longer uh, your uh, copyright. It uh, comes to the IEEE. So you need to like see what is the different implications. And I might not be the expert to uh, uh, guide you on fully through that, but you need to talk to the patent office. You need to talk to the IPSL of your institute. Uh, I think uh, thanks for talking. Thank you. And uh, I think, yeah, as uh, Dr. Kedar and uh, Dr. Mayesh mentioned, I think presentation materials and uh, full videos, I think, will be available. And uh, Professor Mahadevan says transaction are yeah, definitely most challenging as it needs extensive work in both theoretical and experimental domain. While writing the introduction part, some of the obvious information describing work we have to mention, but it shows the plagiarism as similar terms are already present used in the reference paper. So how to deal with this problem? Yeah, I think Dr. Kedar already mentioned less than 15% is allowed that is uh, related to the prior referencing. Uh, so I would suggest get access to some of these uh, tools like Tarnitin, many of like, for example, IIC at least gives the Tarnitin and in IIT Kanpur also I saw it in access to our uh, the faculty members over there. So many institute have this uh, plagiarism checking tools. So you need to check them. And uh, in terms of uh, like uh, when you give the prior referencing, try to write them in your own language. Okay. Sometimes what I have seen my students also do is to copy from that particular paper and just put it over their copy paste. So don't uh, do that because uh, you try to change the language a bit. You try to play the entire thing in your mind uh, and make your own uh, sentences to describe the prior art. That will reduce the uh, plagiarism aspect uh, very significantly. And uh, yeah, reframe and write, I think Dr. Madhavan already mentioned. Any timeline for uh, resubmitting the paper after initial review? Yes, there is that uh, one to three months. And uh, so thank you everyone. Yeah, I think uh, copyright transfer and yes. Thanks. I think uh, Dr. Mahesh, uh, Acha, I think one more question is there. Uh, patent conflicts while publishing paper. Yes, that is what I already mentioned. Like there are some of the things that uh, uh, before, uh, like after publication, there could be some issue. But if you, I, what I've heard, I mean, that uh, if you patent it early, it might, uh, you can publish it in the later stage with some uh, changes uh, to it. Like they, these are some of the issues that, as I said, if you, you need to talk to the attorney and the a legal team on that and does IEEE encourages interdisciplinary research uh, insurance professional engineer solve insurance problem yeah definitely I think uh, uh, I mean IEEE encourages uh, interdisciplinary research in fact uh, the IEEE access journal is purely based on that uh, I mean to publish the interdisciplinary type of content that it promotes uh, the combination of different uh, works that have technical part from different societies. So interdisciplinary research is definitely one thing that IEEE encourages. And, but uh, you need to see if you are, uh, where you are submitting and what is the main technical contribution, how it is fitting in. So those things have to be there. Just because it is interdisciplinary, it might not just get published. You have to uh, point out the exact uh, technical contribution out of that. And, Title and abstract, uh, okay. Uh, I mean, word limits they are typically uh, given to. Uh, I mean, in that particular, for example, in uh, many of the letters and things, I have seen two fifty word limit is there. Title typically you can keep it within three to four. <laughs> I showed you some paper where I made very long title, but that is not the correct practice. I mean, you can try to minimize the title to two to three lines as per the IEEE uh, format. Thesis are uh, probably uh, not uh, available. I'm not very sure that IEEE teacher, because thesis is mostly the property of the institution. So 
it will be in the, available in the institute repository. But some publications that are coming from the thesis, they will be definitely in the IQ. Okay, uh, any opportunities for industry people to tie up with ISC? Yeah, I think uh, definitely opportunities are there, but this is not probably the uh, like right forum. We can definitely talk about it in the uh, later stage. Thanks for the question. There are ways. I mean, there are different ways that industry can engage, and we have uh, consultancy projects and uh, sponsors projects. So there are. Uh, specific institute uh, schemes uh, that are available and a lot of tie ups like many of my colleagues do many uh, industry tie ups. So that is there. Uh, latex, well, latex is not compulsory, but it is good to use like I personally prefer latex because uh, yeah, like some of the things I don't have to worry about like previously when I used word, uh, there were some issues that I faced while uh, making the, you know, trigger placement and things like that. So latex makes those process easy. Also in the latex, you can have that full, uh, like reference list of references already prepared and you can cite accordingly. So there is a systematic procedure in latex writing. So if you using latex, that can help you in preparing the manuscript in many ways, because I, I personally use it, I'm slightly advocating in favor of that. but. It is not regarding the, I mean, technical, anything is not re related to the latex. I mean, it is not, you, if you prepare in Word, uh, also if there is no problem. Uh, so, yes, uh, in abstract, uh, is it good to mention the numerical values of results we are getting like, yeah, of course, I think we need to mention that numerical values and a point out like how much it is there like uh, this is what i also followed in some and many of my friends have, are, are also following okay and i think almost everything is done dr mahesh yes current research topics in antenna domain yeah i mean uh, you can look into maybe quickly i will not take too much time you can look into our website and we have listed some areas and uh, yeah main, main, there are many many areas so maybe some other forum we can discuss more on this so thank you. Uh, yeah, I think Dr. Mahesh, uh, we are uh, done. Yes, I think. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Shutosh, sir, you are there. Yes, I am there. And uh... yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So any uh, final concluding remarks, both of you, you can take one minute and uh, finally conclude uh, uh, your perspective on this authorship. My only remark is not to get discouraged by the rejections. We should take the rejections positively. And authorship, it is very important to author your work. That is the only way to improvise yourself, to do further good work. So I'm, I will suggest that you keep writing. Uh, I think today's presentation, both the presentations are very nice. And you can take the tips and go for the authorship, write papers. Now a connect is coming, map one is coming, contribute a lot in these two conferences. And you will have all the experts in these conferences, which will be giving you a very good comments to you, which will help you in your further work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, over to. Yes, uh, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers, especially I think I believe Bangalore section has uh, this workshop organized uh, for past few years and it should be very helpful. Uh, at least what I feel is like the presentation from Dr. Kedar and I also tried to compliment. So uh, it should be helpful to the people who are trying to recreate, write their manuscripts in the beginning and I will also repeat the same thing like uh, don't if you uh, write your manuscript you send it to some journal it gets rejected don't be too much discouraged just take the uh, comments uh, positively sometimes I know some comments may not be very uh, good uh, to hear but I mean you don't have to worry about them too much and try to improve try to improve by uh, self introspection and things like that and uh, this connect is coming so uh, specifically you can uh, look into contributing in the connect and mapcon people who are in the antenna propagation and mtt community they can try to contribute their works because starting with conference is always a good thing you can get good comments from the reviewers and uh, while you present also there would be experts uh, of that domain there they can guide you to how to extend that work and I, and uh, I also mentioned that uh, you can, there are, I mean, clear cut IEEE policies on how much you have to extend your conference paper so that it get accepted or it, it, it is publishable in a journal. So follow those protocols and plagiarism things, publication ethics, the things that Dr. Kedar and I mentioned, try to follow them. So thanks again to the organizers and to the attendees. Thank you.
yeah thank you thank you very much sir both the speakers and uh, now i take this opportunity to thank uh, itpl bangalore section in collaborating with our uh, itpl apmtt bangalore chapter and i thank pune uh, sri pune mr sir uh, he is our chair apmtt bangalore chapter and uh, dr deepa shanoy uh, chair of bangalore section and i thank uh, both the speakers uh, for i think from 10 o'clock uh, it's almost 2 hours 10 minutes now so dr ashutosh kedar and uh, dr deepdeep sarkar both of them for giving uh, a uh, grateful insight into this uh, publication of uh, journals uh, conferences and transactions so and i would like to thank uh, the participants because almost two hours you are continuously listening to the uh, speakers and i would like to thank uh, chengappa uh, for helping us to organize this workshop he is a secretary of bangalore section and all the participants thank you very much and we'll be uh, uploading this presentation in the itpl bangalore section youtube channel it will be available to all so kindly share it to your uh, you know groups and so that they will get benefited uh, by these things so thank you very much and we'll close the session thank you one and all